Okay, thank you everyone. Nice to be here. Okay, my name is Wei Chen. Okay, by UTN or some students, they like to call me Jackie Chen. Actually, I'm not Jackie Chen. Yeah. And so I'm going to give a presentation today, what I'm doing at the UTA uh, for the new uh, sensitizers for photodynamic therapy. And I would like to start with a video. Please play the video. Accidental discovery in an Arlington lab could mark a big change in the way doctors treat some forms of cancer. Gilma Avalos tonight explaining from the University of Texas at Arlington. All new at 10 o'clock. There's potentially revolutionary research happening inside this UTA lab. We're using this chemical reaction to make the nanoparticles. As its name indicates, this nanoparticle is tiny. So small, it can't be seen by the naked eye. Tiny, but mighty, says its inventor, Dr. Wei Chen. It is very effective to kill the tumor cells. Dr. Chen discovered the cancer killer by accident while working on a project for the Department of Homeland Security. The nanoparticle was meant to help with radiation detection, but he discovered it had an additional benefit. This material can generate toxin to kill the tumor to kill the tumor cells. Not only do researchers say it effectively kills cancerous tumor cells, unlike other treatments, they say the nanoparticle doesn't affect healthy cells. We see no damage to the normal cells. Studies the team conducted on animals show healthy cells were not damaged by the nanoparticle treatment, compared to existing therapies where healthy cells were destroyed. Under the sunshine, they kill 100% of the cells. Dr. Chen believes it's an improvement on traditional so-called photodynamic therapies. PDT uses light to activate a nanoparticle injected into the bloodstream. It targets tumors on or just under the skin, like skin cancer. It's less effective for larger deep tumors because the light can't reach those tumors. But my invention for this material, we can use it for deeper cancer. That's because his nanoparticle is also activated by x-rays, microwaves, and ultrasounds. The ultrasound and the microwave also can get much deeper than the light. Dr. Chen says when compared to other PDTs, this treatment is faster, less expensive, and is already showing promise at treating cancers below the skin. He believes this teeny particle could be a huge game changer. You're saying that this could potentially replace chemotherapy. Yeah, that is uh, the hope that we are trying to do, yeah. Gilma Avalos, CBS 11 News. They believe a combination of radiation therapy and this nanoparticle could one day be used instead of perhaps chemotherapy. And the university obtained U.S. and international patents on that na uh, nanoparticle. And while it may be 10 years or something in that uh, time frame before it's commonly used, the researchers are hopeful that it can someday make a difference. Okay, thank you. So what we're trying to do, we're trying to understand the difference between cancer cell and normal cell and then design some nanoparticle medicine to kill only the cancer cells but not the normal cells. So there's many, many differences. One of the differences is called the active oxygen species. And the cancer cells, they have a lot more. So if we add the sun to the cancer cell, we can kill the cancer cell by without the damage to the normal cell. What we can do that is the called photodynamic therapy. Photodynamic therapy is some medicine you need to use light for activation. We can use light for activation, that is the advantage, then we can use light to control it. For, for example, if the medicine go to the normal tissue, but uh, if we don't shed the light to the normal tissue, there's no, no damage to the normal tissue. Uh, however, using light for activation also has some issues. We know some light, the penetration is an issue, like the UV, the visible really cannot get very deep into the tissue. So in my research, I try to invent some materials using particularly this nano materials and this material can activate by the radiation and in this case penetration is an issue. Also really we extend it to microwave and the ultrasound because microwave ultrasound also can get much deeper than, than uh, the, the light. Oh, that's the original idea and that time I just joined UTA and uh, we use the nanoparticle and conjugate to the porphyrin. However, this system is very complicated and uh, fortunately in 19, uh, in, in in 2014, we invented a new material. This is a new material. And uh, the really good thing for this material is have fluorescence. We identified the structure. There's a new material. And the really interesting to me, this new material is if we use UV for activation, produce RS, can kill the cancer cells. Particularly, even more important, more interesting, 
when we use radiation to activate this material, it can produce a lot, much, much more hours than the traditional photosensitizer like a PBIS. So using this material alone, we can we can use for the deep cancer treatment. We do need some other nanoparticle or nanomaterials. That's the mechanism. I don't want to go uh, talk much about it, but we need energy transfer. And this energy transfer, in this case, we need the energy stay in the exact state for long enough. And here we measure the decay lifetime. They really have very long decay lifetime, so they can energy transfer the energy. And here the cell studies, as you see, if we don't use any nanoparticles, and this dose is really low, only too great, they really cannot kill and damage the cancer cell. But if you use the nanoparticle, they damage a lot and kill 100% of the cells. Why? Because a nanoparticle really can target, go to the mitochondria, and the mitochondria is the power station for the cell. So it's really effective because you can if directly damage the mitochondria. And also by doing this, also we can reduce the dose. As you see here, from one minute to four minutes, if we don't use the nanoparticles, of course, four minutes is the best, right? Because the longer time, they kill more cancer cells. But here, we combine with the nanoparticle, as you see, the three minutes is the best one. It means we don't need to do four minutes. And in this case, we can optimize that the dose for the cancer treatment. And this is really interesting because radiation therapy is the uh, it's like a 60, 70 percent of the market in the cancer treatment, and but the issue is that those are higher, really toxic side of that. So here we can combine the radiation and nanoparticle reduce the dose. This is why I say we can do deeper and better. Yeah, and uh, also our nanoparticle they can accumulate to the tumor size because due to the size, the cavity, the tumor they have cavities. If the particle less than 200 nanometer, they automatically accumulate to the tumor, and. Uh, uh, here we do the animal studies, as you see here. If you're using the nanoparticle alone or the radiation alone, we really cannot shrink the tumor. But if we combine the radiation and nanoparticle, we can shrink the tumor. And in the best case, we can totally remove the tumor. And also, we extend to the microwave, as I mentioned in the video. The microwave activate this nanoparticle also can produce the hours. Like so in this case, we can combine microwave and the nanoparticle to kill the cancer cells. As you see here, if we don't use any particles, and uh, the microwave, in this case, really cannot damage or kill the cancer cells. But uh, if you combine the microwave and nanoparticle, as you see in the 10 minutes, they totally damage uh, the, the cancer cells. Also, here the, uh, here the animal studies, as you see, if we use the nanoparticle alone or the microwave alone, the tumors they continue grows. But uh, if we combine the, the microwave and the nanoparticle, we can suppress. Now that the tumor did not grow at all, and in this case, you know, it is a really, really good result. We try to understand the mechanism because you know, microwave used to kill the cancer simply heating. And uh, by adding the nanoparticle, actually we reduce the heat, but uh, we produce our, the hours. In this case, we can combine the hours, that is oxidative also, also therapy, and uh, the heat together to kill the cancer cell for the cancer treatment, it is more effective. Okay, here we do more about the mechanism. And, uh, and we found when the nanoparticle get into the cell, actually they decompose and release the couple, and the couple can induce the fentanyl reaction to produce the RS to kill the cancer cells. Also, even ultrasound can do that. Okay, here yeah, ultrasound can activate the nanoparticle, also produce again the RS to kill the cancer to kill the cancer cells. In this case, we can combine the ultrasound image and the, the treatment together. Maybe you ask me about the toxicity, the come or not, and we found. After IV injection, another particle, more, most of them go to the lung, but in two weeks, they will come out. And uh, in two weeks, actually, they come out, we did not see any like, really damage to the, to the organ, like the lung, the liver yet. Okay, it means those nanoparticle is really biocompatible. Okay, and we will study more about that, uh, that toxicity. Uh, one of the challenging issues for the photodynamic therapy and after the treatment, the doctor will tell the patient to stay in dark for two weeks or 10 days. Otherwise, you go out, the sunlight will activate you know, those medicine to damage the skin. And uh, my nanoparticles, we don't have the issue like that because my nanoparticles, we don't have absorption in the visible, in the sunlight, as you see. So we, we did do the, the sunlight test. We did not see any hours produced. So for my, if using my material, my medicine, and uh, after the treatment, you can do, go out to do whatever you like. And uh, for companies, for the political application, this is a good deal. This is uh, very important because you know, if you want people to stay in dark, you know, that's psychologically is the issue. And uh, for our material, we don't need to do that. Okay. 
Sau đó xem, test rồi, xem kiểu em luôn bạn.